Hello everybody, welcome back to another Batania tutorial. In today's tutorial, we'll be having a look at a more basic and simple way of automating an orchid. And then we'll also be going on to the processing of the ores from that orchid. So this one does have a follow up video, stay tuned for that. And let's get to it. In this tutorial, I'm going to do things a little bit differently. I don't think you'll get much benefit from me building. So what I'll do is I'll go through a bit of a walkthrough of what we're going to do. So here is our orchid automation. And this is very similar to our smooth stone generator. So if you have a problem making this, it's very, very close. So have a look at the link in the description down below. That will be to our smooth stone generator. And as I say, it's a very simple farm. This has got a few tweaks on it and actually a few improvements. So you might learn something to improve the smooth stone generator that I've got on this channel currently. So this over here is a dispenser with a bucket, which pulls the lava in and dispenses the lava out every 20 or so seconds. The way I've done that is by using some red sand in this. So you can see we've got some red sand there and I've used two red sand in each of these. So we go two red sand, wait a few seconds, and then we'll put another two red sand in there. So that's now got a bit of de a delay to pull that out and push that back in again. The next thing we've done a little bit differently is we've obviously got the orchid over here and we've also got ourselves a mana pool at the back there. That one's getting a bit filled up, but not to worry. What this does is this stops that blast from going past and breaking anything. And it also collects any wasted mana that you can send back into your system there. So that's a little bit of a cool thing that's happening. One thing you might get confused with, as you can see, when I hover over a flower, I'm getting this range of the flower on my screen. That is because I'm using a Manacea monocle and that allows me to do it. That's actually a Batania item. You can see right over there. It's very easy to craft just like that. If you guys ever needed that, it's a very handy thing to have. Now we'll go through this. What's happening is the smooth stone is getting generated. It's getting changed into a ore by this orchid over here. And then every two seconds, you can see I've got two normal sand in this hovering hourglass here. Every two seconds that goes through and with this weight lens, we'll make a drop onto this half slab here. And it's very important because this is actually a bottom half slab. You can see this is on the bottom half of the block. And that allows these ores to fall and get broken. Kind of just like how a torch would break gravel. This does the same thing. Now, we'll go through this because this is pretty much the whole farm, the whole orchid generation over there. We'll go through the automation over here. Now, this is a bit more tricky. It's not really too bad, though, to be honest. I've tried to get everything as compact as possible. Now, if you do outgrow this particular size, you'll have to do things your own way and get a little bit creative with it, but there's nothing too complicated here. The principles will remain the same. You might just need a few more hopper hocks. Now, what we've got going on here is we've got a hopper hock, uh, yeah, a floating hopper hock in the middle there. And we've got each of these here. So we've got the emeralds, the redstone, the diamond, and the lapis over there with an item frame on each of these chests. Now, for those of you that aren't too clued up with Batania and might wonder why we've got item frames on the chests, that is because the item frames will tell the hopper hock that's where these items go and nothing else will go in there. You can see we've only got diamonds in there currently and we've only got redstone in that one. And as for the others, the same. Now, those are all connected up there. We've also got it connected to the normal coal. Now, that one over there is going into the furnace through a hopper at the back there, if you were wondering. And that allows us to process any ore that we get going through here. Now, the next thing we'll go through is the other hopper hock, which is over here. And this one's a little bit different. Now, the reason this one's different is because I've used this infestation spore on it. You can try a bore LC. That might work for you. I needed to use the infestation spore. Place it on there. That'll delay it so that you can get your carpus in to lay whatever, brick, whatever blocks you need to lay down. And those blocks that we need to lay down are these blocks over here, these coal ore blocks, which are getting picked up by that there. Now, this is also picking up another block, which is down there, being the iron ore and the gold ore. And that's going into this chest, which is going into this hopper, which is going into this furnace. Now, you could try putting this next to the furnace, but that will only pick up things and put them into this spot here. It will not put them into this spot over here. So you need to use a hopper. I've just used a chest for any backup. I don't think we'll get any backup, but if we did, that's where we're going to be putting that. Now, that's that whole system of picking up and putting down. Over here, we've got everything being collected from the hopper. That's pretty vanilla. And I'll go through the next thing, which is how to get the coal. Now, this is kind of depending on your situation. If you've got a lot of mana, I'd recommend trying out the Exoflame. I've actually got a video which will be coming out next week from this video. So if you watch this video in the, in the future, very far future, it's probably out already. Now, Having a look down here, I'll quickly explain what's going on to make sure that we only have one block being dispensed at any given time. Over here, we've got a gold pressure plate, which has got a hot, an open crate above it. That will drop the ore down. 
it'll go on that and power this redstone under here, which powers this torch, which powers that block to power that torch, which stops this from getting picked up. So if you got any troubles, I'll just zoom out. You can maybe pause the video there and see what I've done there. So that's just stopping that hopper from letting anything go through. Now that's that whole situation there. The reason we want this to drop down here is because we want it to get placed by this random carpus onto these blocks under here. Now what we'll do is we'll just put in two over there. So I think every 20 seconds, I want this to break these blocks and we'll show you the way we've done it. But that's kind of the way I've got this whole thing laid out. If you want to just have a look, we'll wait for a few more seconds and you'll see all these blocks break. And the way we're breaking it is with this over here. We've got a ball lens on that, which is this green one. And that will break any coal ore into these normal ores here. Now, if you didn't want to use fortune, you could also do this with the diamond, the lapis, the redstone, the emerald. And that will just mean you'll only get the normal break for that. No fortune included on that. So you can see also another thing. We've got the same block under the random carpus as what we have under these ores here. And the reason for that is because anything that lands there, any of those, will go on the same block that this one's on top of. So because this one's on top of this block, it'll only place on that block. Very simple, that one. We've also got the mana pool at the end there. And the reason for that mana pool is to collect any excess mana, just like over there. Another thing which may come in handy to know is that this is in the perfect range to pick up blocks over there. And the reason is that because is it's because we have got it connected up to a mana pool over there that extends its range. And also these hopper, uh, these hopper hocks over here have got extended range because of the mana, the mana pools. So if you're having troubles, check that they're close enough. I recommend, as I say, the mana sea monocle. See how that goes for you. But as I can see here, everything is working pretty well. I'm actually quite impressed with how this is going. It's very simple, as I say. If you have any troubles, just give it a try. Maybe if you're getting a bit of a backup, you can extend things. You can see that we're not actually getting a backup of gold and iron, so this will go through. Then the gold will go through, then the iron will go through. There's probably not going to be a problem there. If there is, you've got a very good orchid. So there you have it, guys. I hope this does come in handy for you, and I hope it was as simple as I hoped it could be. Leave a like on the video if it did help you, and also leave a comment if you've got any questions, or if you want to just say anything, leave it down in the comment section. But thank you very much, guys. And I'll see you next time.